I just got an ad in Tetris, a game from the 80s. Really? That's when I knew ads had gone too far. I'm so tired of this. Let's fix that, shall we? Previously, I made a video on setting up Pi-hole as your network-wide ad blocker, and somehow it got over a million views. Thank you all so much for the incredible support, it really does mean a lot. A lot of you asked how do I access my Pi-hole when I'm away from home? So today, I'm going to show you how to block ads on the go using Tailscale. Before we start setting up Tailscale, we will need to go to our DNS settings on our Pi-hole, Expert, and Permit All Origins. This will allow Tailscale to make DNS requests through the Pi-hole. This is completely safe to do since our router isn't exposed to the internet through any open ports or anything like that. We are ready to go after we hit Save and Apply. Let's get to setting up Tailscale. Raspberry Pi is already running. We can just connect to the Raspberry Pi through SSH. Then insert our password and we are now connected to the Raspberry Pi. So now we can install Tailscale by following the script here. Go ahead and install that. Now that Tailscale installation is complete, we can start using Tailscale by running their command here. Okay, now we can authenticate Tailscale. And I'm using my sign in with Apple. Connect. Login successful. So we have success there. And we can see my phone and the pie hole and their addresses. So now we can add the pie hole as our DNS for Tailscale. So we're gonna go add name server, custom, and place our address here. And there we are. We now have the DNS set to the pie hole. And the documentation also says we will need to override DNS servers. To ensure we have no DNS interruptions, we will also want to disable key expiry on the pie hole itself. So now it will not uh, need to re-authenticate and you know, have the address change for the DNS or anything like that. Setting up Tailscale is as easy as downloading the app and signing in to the same account you used for the pie hole. Then once we're connected and we have Tailscale pointed to our pie hole DNS, we can completely avoid ads on these apps. So here we go, no banner ad scene, play a little of the game, and no ad between the levels. If you're enjoying this video and want to see more projects like it, please leave a comment, hit like, and subscribe so you don't miss what's next. Now, before we get into the full setup for Windows, I want to take a minute to answer some of the most common questions you guys had from the last video. One of the most common questions was, will it slow down my internet? And the answer to that is no. Since the pie hole is just DNS filtering, those lookups are very fast, low bandwidth. Once the site's resolved, there's no additional hops and we don't need to reference the, the pie hole anymore. As you can see in my screenshot, I'm getting the same ping before and after connecting to pie hole. Speed test here also shows the same result. Another question is, does the pie hole model matter? In my hand here, I have the Pi Zero 2W and the Pi 5. And to be honest, the Pi Zero 2W is even overkill for Pi Hole. If we add tail scale to the mix, it still is able to handle both of those quite well. And it uses less wattage and resources than the Pi 5. So, really, it's the if this is your goal to block ads across your network and on the go, then I think the Pi Zero 2W at the cheaper cost and energy use is the right move. Why not run it on a PC? Well, a Windows laptop or a PC or anything like that uses significantly more energy running 24 seven. The Pi Zero 2W on the other hand only uses like one to three watts of energy and it's completely silent with no heat sink required. Do I need to update my TV settings in order to utilize the Pi hole? The answer to that is also no, since the TV just connects to the router and the router is sending all DNS requests to the Pi hole, then the TV falls within that uh, ad blocking, so no necessary change on the settings there. 
unless you're trying to specifically have your smart TV pointed at just the pie hole and you don't want it across your entire router network, then in that case you would set it as the DNS. Any drawbacks? Mostly what I've seen is my emails that have that are served by ad networks won't load as I show in the video here. This is fine since you can just hit load content and the images will load anyway. This is one of the most requested topics. In this next segment, I'll be showing how to set up Pi Hole, but on a Windows machine. This time, it'll also be on a TP-Link router, which is a lot more common than the Google Fiber configuration I had on a Mac last time. We're going to be doing the Pi Hole setup from a Windows PC. It starts with the Pi Imaging software, which is where we'll be taking our SD card, plugging it into our Windows PC, and formatting it. So to start, I'm going to hit Raspberry Pi 02W, since that's the best price to performance for Pi Hole, and it's the one I recommend. I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit to keep it future-proof for any upcoming software that will only support 64-bit. It also doesn't use that much more memory than 32-bit as well. Then I'm setting my SD card here for my storage. I'm going to edit settings, set my host name, I'm going to set it to Pi-Hole, set our password, username and password, so it's going to be Wesops. Okay, configure WLAN. So if you're already connected to Wi-Fi on your PC, it'll actually autofill here. In this case, I don't want the 5 gigahertz band since the Raspberry Pi only supports 2.4 gigahertz, so we're going to connect to that um, band. Autofills the password, set our locale, and country. Go to services, enable SSH, and we're going to use password authentication. So using SSH, we will be able to connect through this username and password. And that's everything. We'll hit save. We'll apply the settings and click yes. So there you go. It'll now write to the drive and we will start setting up Pi-hole once we can connect to it. For after you've formatted it on your Windows PC for the Pi Imaging, plug in your micro SD and the micro USB into power. It's actually on the left side I found out and that is the power in. And what you'll want is the shortest USB to micro USB cord you can use. Otherwise, just use a power supply that runs from something like this to the Pi hole. Now that our Pi is up and running, we're going to go ahead and go to the terminal and connect to our Pi hole. So using that username and host name, I have wesops at pihole.local. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. It's now added to the list of hosts. I just need to add my password. And there we are. Now we have the green text, it means we are connected to our Pi Hole. So we can go ahead and start the installation there. You're gonna use this command. It'll go ahead and run through all the steps to set that up. Okay, now we need to sign our Pi Hole a static IP. To do that, you'll go to either tplinkwifi.net for my tplink router or 192.168.86.1. Uh, you can look up for your admin page for your respective router. So for me, I'm going to log in to the TP-Link dashboard here. Go to Advanced, then Network, DHCP Server, and see we have our pile here with a MAC address and assigned IP. We're going to add an entry. Copy the MAC address, copy the IP, and give it the same description, enable, and we'll click save. And there we go. Our Pi Hole is now going to always be one this 192.168.0.199. Then we go to back to where we're running the Pi Hole setup, and we've assigned it a static IP so we can continue. Choose an interface. I'm going to go with WLAN, since we want it over Wi-Fi, but you can use Ethernet as well. I'm going to select Cloudflare as my DNS. It's one of the more um, well-known and used ones. And add the default block list. 
For a query logging, you can enable this. If your SD card isn't really good at running, you know, multiple cycles through the writes and reads and things like that, you can just go ahead and disable query logging. You could also go into anonymous mode. You're free to set other modes if you want to see what domains are flowing through your pihole, but in my case, I'm okay with, with no uh, logging. Now our pihole is configured. Such admin. Also, want to set a password. Oh, sudo. Password's been set. Now, the next key part is telling our router to route the DNS request through the pihole. So, see, you can, we have no queries coming through. So, what we'll want to do is take this IP address set it as our primary, click save, and then click reboot. And that should start having all the devices on the router connect through the pie hole on the DNS. Once I rebooted the router, now we can start seeing requests are coming through to the pie hole. And that's how you set it up on a Windows PC using a TP-Link router. Some further configuration that we can do is if we want to add more lists, we'll add a block list using the address here, and that will then allow us to update the pie hole. We can also use gravity to update the list of block domains. And that's it. Now your pie hole doesn't just protect your home network. It goes with you anywhere thanks to Tailscale. Whether you're at a coffee shop, hotel room, or even on mobile data, you can enjoy all of it ad-free. If this video helped you out, please drop a like, comment if you're interested in more videos like this, and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching, I'll see ya.